Hello everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Place Factorio Space Exploration and I'm nearly at the point where I can actually start using the word space without having to um, cough and go <clears throat> after, after, after every single time because I think I'm nearly there. So since the last episode the big thing I did was getting the rocket fuel up and running. I was talking about that last time so now I've got the Vulcanite coming in here by train from the uh, from the core mining which is quite nice. It saves me having to use the oil for yet another thing. Uh, and then there's a few steps to process this, which almost feels slightly angel bobs because there's sort of multiple steps and then side products and so on. So first of all we pulverise it into this sort of grubby stuff here, and then it gets washed in these chemical plants, um, and that involves taking water. And because this stuff is some sort of weird heat producing rock, and that's why it's so good for rocket fuel, it also produces some ludicrously hot steam as well, so this is 165 degree steam. So I'm passing that into a turbine just to generate a little bit of electricity from it. To be honest, that's mostly there to use it up to make sure I don't end up with more steam than I know what to do with. Just, just to do something with it, because this, this mod pack doesn't have any vent options in it. Actually, let's not put that there. Let's put a... I think I can put a tank on the other side of the of the uh, turbine like that, and it'll just get used up uh, as and it'll fill up as, as and when necessary. So, at the moment, this turbine is more than capable of using that, but I'm just concerned that at some point I might be not using enough electricity or something like that. So it gives it a little bit more of a buffer. Anyway, uh, that then, I don't know why that's green inside and, and green coming out the top. I'm pretty sure that should be red on both sides because it's meant to be the colour of the input and the colour of the output as the two, um, two colours. But let's not worry about that for now. That then outputs uh, some, uh, some uh, so washed vulcanite and some rock. And the, the ro uh, stone can then be passed off down here. I've got a, a belt to get rid of it and that passes it through some furnaces over here that turn it into bricks and oh dear that's backed up okay I'm going to have to um, I was hoping that I'd just be able to feed that straight onto the bus and I'd be using bricks up at enough of a rate to uh, for them to get for, for it to get all just get churned through but apparently that's not the case I'll have to have a look at that at some point anyway so yes then I've got uh, these assembly machines here uh, happily turning the, um, the crushed vulcanite and washed vulcanite into um, what are these cubes called? Oh, vulcanite blocks, fair enough. Uh, which are then fed into here and they're turned into rocket fuel and I've got those dribbling off down onto the bus. Good. Another thing I've done, um, I was talking about this at the end of the last episode, but I'd, I uh, freed up this, this whole area down here pretty much at the end of the last episode, I think. So now I've gone in and I've claimed all of these mining patches because I was so short of stone and copper. Uh, I've forgotten to put radars in a couple of them, so I can't, can't actually look at them very well. But uh, yeah, they're, they're just my standard um, mining layout. The rows of, uh, rows of miners feeding onto belts, pass it through a, um, a balancer and then in, into a station. So they're, they're just all, all linked up as normal and uh, yeah, that works, that's working quite well. I've expanded the defences a little bit around here, so I've put this bit in and cleared out this, this area of biters. Uh, there's still these few worms over here, but as I think I said last time, I don't care about them because single wor individual worms like this can't actually spread. It takes bi biters to spread. I think I think it works by the biters will wander around, and every so often they'll go, oh look, here's a nice area, and and a biter will magically turn into a uh, into a nest, and then they'll just sort of spread out from there. Which is why, despite having cleared this sort of area out when I was building, um, it, it started to grow again. There's there's, there's more nests appearing. Um, yeah, like that. So I guess I should trundle along here with the artillery every so often and push them back a bit. Um, yeah, maybe. So I still haven't finished this area off. I've been sort of umming and erring about what to do. I'm tempted to build a wall across here and then up here because that'll get me that uranium patch there. And then maybe a sort of an L-shaped one and get just, just free up this area. And then I will at least have surrounded a whole area and I can call that home. I've ramped up the meteor defences a little bit as well because... Um, uh, because they were because meteors are, are still a threat and as I was saying last episode these massive guns are only actually capable of shooting down one meteor each so uh, or meteorite each rather um, and when they do they they, they, go, they go poom they get big red beam comes out the top of them and then they take about five minutes to recharge if any um, asteroids come in while I'm doing this episode I'll point it out and, and show you and then the really exciting thing I've uh, now I've got the fuel coming in round here. I've managed to finish off this, finish my first rocket, and up here I've got satellites being constructed. So we've got the radars being built on site, which require electric motors, and which is slightly annoying because I had to then build them on <laughs> with these extra four machines up here. But yeah, it's building the radars, putting them into the um, into the satellite machine. I'm being kind of lazy here. Why has that got 13 in it? I told it to. 
only work if there's less than... That's interesting. So I've, I must have done something wrong here. Um, so I've set... Oh, that's not a satellite. That's an arcosphere. Right. That's what I actually need. <laughs> just to find the satellite, which is there, that one. So if that's less than two, then it'll run. Okay, so that'll stop me uh, getting quite so many of those in there. I'm also using uh, logistics robots to bring the solar panels and accumulators up here because I really couldn't be bothered to run a, a belt up. And then also the logistics bots will, bring, bots will bring the satellites from there down to here where they can be loaded into the, into the rocket. So, I had a quick look at this. Uh, launching satellites tells me that when I launch them I get a, a satellite uplink system. So that's, that's this, which I can't open at the moment because I haven't launched one. Let's launch my first satellite. Always an exciting air. Exciting moment. So, right. Orbiting space platform. NASA navigation satellite uplink. A new planet. I've discovered a planet called Sakimi. Okay, let's have a look at the. Alright, let's have a look at Universe Explorer first. It was mentioned first. So we've got Nor Norvis. Uh, Kalidus is the sun. Norvis is the current planet. Norvis. Uh, 67% threat. Okay, so it's. Primary primary resource, that's presumably I know that looks like core mine stuff. Um, and then we've got here we've got the um uh, that looks like Vulcanite, so that's not so useful because I've already got that here. Um I can get beryl from there though, that's that's new. I haven't got any of that yet. And from here, well we've got all of these, so Right, okay, so that's Interesting. Let's have a look at the um, navigate navigational satellite now as well. How do I? Okay. <laughs> I don't know how far I'm expected to go. Oh, here we go. Right. So this is this is my current planet, Norvis. Uh, you can view the surface. Interestingly, right. Okay, so this is basically it's like the um, the normal map view, except I can't zoom out very far, and I can see everywhere. And oh yeah, you can see on the mini map up here, it's exploring as I do it. So I better not do this too much, or I'll just generate an absolutely enormous map, and my save game will be a million a million megabytes. So actually, I can use this to find out whether whether I was right about the uh, the land over this way and how much area I would have to clear out to get a complete, um, not quite an island, but yeah. Okay, there. it looks like that, yeah, my I, I was right, it's not going to be practical to clear out all the way to the coast over here, it's an absolutely huge area. Okay, well, that isn't a huge surprise. Okay, where else can I view? Sakimi, let's have a look at Sakimi as well, just because it's there. Ooh, this is taking a little while to draw and think. <laughs> yes, generate enormous areas. There we go. Okay, so we have some massive patches of uh, vulcanite around and some beryl and some stone and a few biters as well. It's not too many biters. That doesn't look too threatening. Oh, and a pyramid of some sort. In I have no idea what that's going to be for, and it doesn't tell me anything about it. Um, that's most stuff. You know, you mouse over it, it tells you all about it. This thing, nope, that is just actually just a mystery, a mystery pyramid of some sort. Okay, let's let's head back to um, Norvis. In fact, let's let's close the navigation satellite view now. Has that left on my um, map all that area I explored? Yes, it has. That's quite handy because now I can zoom out a bit further and uh, <laughs> and see what I've got to got to play with. Right, okay, so that's a big step forward. I've got, uh, gone to space. <laughs> Finally feel like I've actually um, started doing the exploration part of space exploration. So that's 
rather nice. It's still, oh, and my and my mouse is a torch as well. That's quite nice. Um, okay, good. I don't really know what to do next now. Um, <laughs> but I've done that, so there's, I think I'm just going to have to spend some time reading through this. I'll investigate some more of these um, different resources and things, and find out and work out what to do next. But that's um, that's been a, a big step forwards in how uh, how um, things are going with um, with the space exploration. I have in fact started to explore space, so you know that's that's good. I just need to see if I can work out how to get there. That'll be something to look look forward to in a future episode, I think. And I think now that I've actually got to space, I'm going to call this the end of the first season and, and then start another season. Still carrying on with the same um, same game, of course, but uh, moving on to another, uh, moving on a little bit further. I hope you'll come back to see that. Um, then, uh, to be honest, it won't make much of a difference. I'll keep the same schedule up, and I hope to see you next time. Thanks for watching.